I honestly, I can't believe this is insane. Just crossed over £10,000 on Chat IQ. Now there's a lot that I still need to do. I think in the first two weeks, we managed to cross over £4,000 in monthly recurring revenue. Yesterday was a pretty rough day. I actually deleted a load of data. We've almost got to 10,000 customers. This is the first software that I've had that's even crossed over £1,000, let alone £10,000. So in the last video, we got the first few subscribers paying for Chat IQ. We're now actually getting some monthly recurring revenue. So what I want to do is just make sure that they stay and they keep paying. There's a lot of work that needs to be done, just basically removing a whole load of bugs. We're going to be trying to get Zapier introduced, so that I'm really looking forward to. So it's actually been two days now that I've spent working on the UI of this app, and we're kind of at the point now where I'm ready to launch it live. The UI has always been something that I just sort of skip over because I want to get to getting the product actually working. So as you know, this is what the original design looks like. But the biggest problem I actually have with this, this navigation bar on the left is just sort of floating around in space, which has always annoyed me. So this is the new version of chat IQ. I think this is the biggest improvement so far. So if you guys have got any ideas, do let me know and I'll add those in. Every now and again, I have these slow days where all I'm doing is fixing bugs or implementing a couple of new features that have been requested by my users, which don't typically feel like I'm doing a lot of work or making a lot of progress. All of this is really designed just to pull me through for the next couple of weeks while I work on version 3, which I'll probably have to learn how to code in order to complete that update. Yesterday was a pretty rough day, I actually deleted a load of data, so I have no idea now what our previous results were, so I can't really compare KPIs in terms of advertising and marketing. Um, but we've also got an editor now on board who's scaling up our marketing, uh, video editing and production, so hopefully the next couple of months should be insane. <laughs> so we're about to try and integrate ChatIQ with Zapier, which is something I've been wanting to do for weeks now, but I just haven't managed to get around to it. I have got no idea what I'm doing. I've got some experience now because I've obviously built ChatIQ to what it is so far, but all of this stuff is quite complicated for me because I'm not a developer. So what I've done, I have a chat IQ chatbot, which is basically trained on all the documents and everything I need in my business. When you come into chat IQ and you're training a chatbot, obviously you can keep training it on multiple files. But what's quite cool is in my active training data, I've got all of these lists here. So for example, when we click one of those links, it opens up the dev documents. And then I've asked chat IQ, walk me through the process step by step, and you can see how much detail it's gone into. And that's basically my day, day by day, every time I've got a problem, I just asked chat IQ. Basically, it doubles like my output, triples my output. It's totally insane. And the fact that people are using this daily, just, I, I, I don't know, it just amazes me completely. I find it really strange to look back and see how much has changed in literally just eight months. The problems that I faced back then were mountains I didn't think I'd be able to climb, but now I could climb those mountains easily. But all the way through this process, the one thing that's kept me going is knowing that my users enjoyed using my app and got value out of it. And I've continued to try and make the product better for them. And I think that's probably the biggest thing that I've learned from building this software. Okay, so this is the main voyage. I've just completed um, the steps to hopefully be able to log in to Zapier through ChatIQ. Now, because I'm already logged in, this may already log in straight away. So we have this button here where we can actually sign in to ChatIQ. Uh, when I click it, it then opens a pop-up. Hopefully, it should give me a login page. <sighs> okay, that didn't work. I don't know why. Okay, let's keep going. I've also realized what the current issue is, uh, why I couldn't actually log into another account. It's because I'm using the test dashboard. It turns out I'd literally just missed some very obvious things. So we're going to give it another go. So we're just going to sign in with chat IQ. Hopefully this will then load up. Wait, hang on. Did it do it? It's done it. Wait, it did it. It did it. So I just ran a test and it's come back test successful. Uh, and there you go. Awesome. I can't believe it did it. Cool. So we've now got this pop up and in the pop up there we've got the we've got the login page. Ah! I, I don't know, I'm overly excited by this, but this is this is so exciting for me. There were quite a few times where even just the smallest success like this in a day would be what kept me motivated and pushed me through, especially when I was developing and building things that I'd never done before and I would constantly hit so many problems. So then obviously if I then come to the sign in page and I try and log in with my normal email and password, there we have it. Easy, job done, it's not that difficult at all.
So at the moment we've just integrated Zapier uh, and it should theoretically just create a new message in our database. I'm just going to say test Zapier message. Now, we got a result. We have a result. Now this is the initial first setup of Zapier with ChatIQ and we're actually getting a reply which is awesome. The only problem is I haven't yet managed to work out how to save the chat history. So for now we're just going to be able to get the chatbot to respond to a question based off the training data. But this is so cool, I'm so excited about this. But the next step is going to be taking the information in the response from chat IQ and then sending that back into Slack. Um, but I'm pretty excited about this to be fair. And there we have it. That is the first message. I'm sorry, but in the AI language model, I cannot interact with users in real time or recognize usernames. Is there anything else I can assist you with? That is so cool. I honestly, I can't believe we've managed to get it integrated. Now there's a lot that I still need to do. This isn't ready for you guys yet. I'm gonna have to get a few people using it on a beta and then it's gonna take a while to approve it before we can actually launch it. But this is very exciting for ChatIQ's future. Okay, we're gonna do a test. I'm gonna try and send it a message through Slack and we'll see if we get a response back live through Slack. So in theory, it'll take a message from Slack, it will then send it to ChatIQ and then get the response and send that back through Slack. Okay, right, so now we're gonna try it again. I've made some slight improvements. We've said, what is ChatIQ? Now, before I send that through, I just wanna show you guys. So this is the current version we're running and if we come to the chatbot settings, you can see the active training data. This chatbot is trained to answer questions exclusively on my website. So if I come over here and I say, what does chat IQ do? We'll give it a second and see if anything else comes through. Dude, I, honestly, I can't believe this is insane. It's come back, it knows. It's a company that provides AI-powered chat solutions for businesses. Their chatbots are designed to help companies automate customer support, sales, and marketing. I honestly, I genuinely can't believe it. I'm so excited about it. So I forgot to film the rest of that, but we've had a pretty successful day. Um, obviously, Zapier is basically set up. I've got to still run some more tests, um, and then we'll roll that out, see if anybody uses it. If they use it, we'll keep it. If they don't, we'll probably remove it. Um, we've been bringing on customers all day. We've still got people signing up for free trials, so everything's going well at the moment. My biggest concern, however, is obviously churn. So in the next video, we're probably going to be starting to write out the software using code, which is going to require me learning how to code, uh, be using tools like ChatGPT to teach me and maybe try and write some of the code, write various APIs and expand the app like that. So that's probably going to be the next few weeks. And if you haven't watched the rest of the series, go ahead and watch those as well. This is episode three, so there's two more before this one. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe down below. But I will see you guys in my next video.